As Ricky did further reading on the bus, he realized that the keepers of the blabberbeak curse had gone easy on him. Although sodium is in salt, it turns out that salt is really a compound of sodium and chloride. He thanked the gods. He checked to see what the second antidote was. That night, he would have to write the name of seven elements. He might have to use the elements with those big, long names. He discovered that using the shorter forms, the symbols, made good sense. Ricky's handwriting was not the greatest, and he cramped up easily. He spent an hour or so writing out the names and their symbols. Then Ricky fell off to sleep. He thought that he had completed step number two. He slumbered peacefully. The next day, Ricky and I checked under his eyelids again. Looks like the same to me. What do you think, Ricky? He looked up in the mirror. Not again. What did I, what did I do wrong this time? Will you check it for me, David? So I pored over his notebook during English class. Ricky had written the first seven elements that appear on the periodic chart. I read them. Hydrogen, H. Helium, H-E. Lithium, L-I. Bear, really, really silly something, B-E. Boron, B. Carbon, C. Nitrogen, N. I had a theory. Since I already knew how to spell six of the elements correctly, that the really, really something was not spelled right, I passed a note to Ricky. Hey, Rick, check your spelling on the fourth element. Fix that, and we'll check your eyes again. About five minutes later, he nodded his head up and down. I knew that it meant I was right. This time, when we checked the whites of his eyes, the three of the number 13 had disappeared. Now we only had one more step to go. Yes! Things were looking up until it was Ricky's turn for show and tell. Ricky stood up slowly. He gave me that doomed look. I thought to myself, this is gonna be good. Let's hear all the big words he uses to describe the kite that his grandfather gave him. Ricky cleared his throat. <clears> throat> On this fine day, it brings me extreme satisfaction to have a blessed moment to share the kite that my benevolent grandfather gave me. <laughs> the whole class just lost it. We laughed our heads off. We couldn't help ourselves. Ricky just held the kite up for one brief moment, then he quickly returned to his seat, dragging the kite behind. Just when everything had been going so smoothly for him. Ricky tried to keep a low profile on his way to the bus stop. No luck. Amy asked him, Hey Einstein, how you doing? Ricky just made a face at her. Even the bus driver had heard about the big words Ricky had been spouting off for the last few days. I heard the bus driver say, Here he comes, Dr. Frankenstein himself. <sighs> Ricky just shook his head and found a seat in the back. The bus driver was his uncle. <laughs> what could he say? Mortified by recent events of the day, Ricky rushed up to his room to finish the final assignment. He wanted this blabberbeak curse gone, yesterday. It was a little harder this time. It wasn't that he couldn't find any compounds. There were long lists, but he had to pick the ones that could be photographed. He finally decided that he could get pictures of these. Ammonia, water, hydrogen peroxide, carbon monoxide, and baking soda. Ricky's mom saw him rooting around in the cupboards. What are you looking for, Ricky? She asked. Baking soda. I have to take a picture of a box of sodium bicarbonate for science class. I need four other pictures, too, Ricky told his mother. 
Mrs. Matthews knew exactly where she kept her baking soda. Here, son. Hope this helps. Ricky snapped a photo of her. She was smiling and holding the box in her hand. While he was in the kitchen, Ricky took a photo of running water coming out of the sink, too. What else can I help you with, son? His mother asked. Ammonia, Ricky said. We have that under the sink. Open the door. It is right in the front. Ricky snapped another picture. That made three down and two to go. He knew that his older sister lightened her hair with peroxide. He had seen that brown bottle enough times. But his sister told him that she was totally out. She told him that she would pick some up tomorrow, the day before Halloween. His father helped him with the last compound. He revved his engine in the morning to help Ricky get a picture of carbon monoxide as it came out of his tailpipe. It was mixed in that cloud of steam somewhere. Ricky told me all of this in the schoolyard the next day. He still asked me to check his work just to make sure that everything was spelled correctly and that the formulas were right. He remembered that sometimes two heads are better than one. Ricky was playing it kind of close to the midnight deadline by waiting for his sister to come home with the peroxide. She usually was quite dependable, I had to admit. Still, I worried a little. Ricky's sister did pick up the peroxide at CVS on her way home from school. Yes, she was dependable. So dependable that she got a frantic phone call from a neighbor, a woman she babysat for regularly. Seemed the woman had to work overtime or lose her job. Would she mind watching little Marty for a couple hours, 4 p.m. to 6-ish? She didn't think it would take much longer than that. Big Sister was glad for the job. She agreed to do it. She called her mom to let her know that she would not be coming home for supper. She was still planning to streak her hair for the Halloween party. She would only be gone until a little after 6 p.m. Ricky was waiting for his sister as soon as he got off the school bus. Fifteen minutes. A half hour. Forty-five minutes. What is keeping his sister? His mom saw him pacing. What's wrong, son? Nothing. Oh, your sister won't be home for dinner. We are supposed to save her two pieces of pizza. Not coming home for dinner? Ricky ran upstairs. He was disgusted and called his sister. Chill, chill, she said. I have the peroxide, not to worry. See you soon, bro. <sighs> I hope so, he sighed and hung up. The two hours that he waited seemed like an eternity. Then his mom got a call on her cell phone. Seems that little Marty's mom got stuck in a traffic jam. There was an accident on Main Street. She was on her way, but there would be a delay. Now Ricky was really beside himself. He would wait until 7, but then walk to CVS himself if he had to, and if his parents would let him go. Tick, 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 6.30, 6.45. She finally came in at seven o'clock on the dot, an hour late. He still had time. Ricky all but grabbed the CVS bag out of his sister's hand. You're a strange bird these days, Ricky Matthews. Bring the bottle back soon. I have to streak my hair for the party. Ricky was happy and relieved when he snapped the final photo. He had beaten the deadline. I came over to his place and checked his eyelids just to be sure. The whites were clear. No numbers appeared at all. The blabber beak curse was over. Say something, Ricky. You're a good friend, Davy. Happy Halloween. The end.